Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to be working on a project from Mexico, something that they call tin work. And you and I together in the class have already looked at a couple of samples of it off of the internet. But now we're going to start working with the things that you find in your unit bag. So pull those out. Well, you'll have just one. I have two in case I mess up. You'll notice that we're not working with tin, we're working with aluminum. But that's okay because it behaves in a similar way and it's easy for me to find this aluminum to make up for you guys. It's a roaster pan from the grocery store, one of these disposable aluminum roaster pans. So if you really like this technique and you want to do more of it, have your mom pick up a roaster pan and cut it up into slices for you. Uh, I have bent the edges around so that there's never any chance of any of you hurting yourselves because it's kind of sharp when you cut this with scissors. So hopefully there will be nobody injuring themselves on this project today. But we are going to be making a simple, listen to what I said, simple scene on our Mexican tin art. I know some of you are going to be very anxious to make a picture of your dog with, with uh, uh, in the flower bed in your backyard. Please don't try to do something complex. This needs to be something very simple because we are new at this and I'm afraid if we try to get too much detail in it, it's not going to work for us. So I have two samples here to show you. I just made a sun. This is basically just a circle with some rays on it and it took me a while. I needed to be pretty darn patient to get this piece of tin to get convex on this, concave on this side and convex on this side. It took me a while to get the tin to bend to do what I wanted. And I don't want to set any of us up for failure. I want to set us up for success. So please choose something simple. Here's another sample. This one I've already colored. This is a Christmas tree or an evergreen. And I was just working with can I get the aluminum to be concave for me by working it and working it and working it? And then I stippled the background and I will show you how to do that later when we're doing our demonstration here. But this one will also eventually get the uh, colors on it. But I wanted you to see before I colored it that it is actually three dimensional and it took me a while to get there. So let's all pack our patience with us in our toolbox as we start this craft. You will also notice that while making my evergreen tree, I actually split the aluminum right there. So I wasn't as cautious as I could have been and it did come through. That's not a problem if that happens. If you puncture your aluminum, that's okay. Believe it or not, there is a folk art technique that they do in Haiti that is made up of totally puncturing and puncturing and puncturing the metalwork. So if you end up with a few holes in your metalwork, then it can go from being Mexican metalwork to being Haitian metalwork. So it's all good. So let's take a look at the piece that you're going to do. First thing I'd like you to do is on the back, take one of your Sharpie markers that you have and put your initials and the date on the back of it so that later on your mom and dad will know who made this and when. I will be able to look back at that and say, I remember 2020. That was the year we were all sitting at home doing art via Zoom. My piece of aluminum has a little bit of little bumpity bumps in there and I would like to try to get rid of some of those. So the best way to work the metal is I've got a whole pile of paper towels all folded and folded and folded and folded. And that's going to give me kind of a cushy surface. I also have, in case I choose to have that, is uh, newspapers. These aren't quite as cushy, but they're a little bit cushy, so I have access to both. And I think what I'm going to do to try to get rid of these bumpity bumps is I'm going to try to roll on them with a spoon. I've got the biggest spoon in my kitchen. It's metal. 
and I'm not scraping it across the aluminum to scratch the aluminum. I'm just kind of pressing on the bowl and rubbing. And that is helping a little bit with the helping a little bit with the the pattern of the of the roaster pan is what we're looking at. So I want to kind of get rid of that and I can do that by pressing down. I'm pushing from the shoulder. I'm not just pushing with my wrists. I'm really putting the entire weight of my arm on the heel of my hand and it's in that bowl and then this one is just kind of helping along by moving the handle of the spoon and working that away. Like I say, this one takes some patience. So that I think is better. And I've also got some words on mine. You won't have any words on yours because I kept the ones that have words on them thinking maybe I could get rid of them where you might have a little bit more trouble. I can press it too. From the back side, I don't mind scraping the spoon across it because if I scrape the aluminum on the back, nobody's going to see it. Okay, I think that's about as good as I'm going to be able to get it. I want to remember that this is supposed to be a simple design. Something round is good. Something very simple like an evergreen tree is good. I'm just trying to make my, my picture bumpy, kind of three-dimensional. That's what I'm looking for. And I think what I'll do for this one is an apple. I'm going to just kind of sketch it where I want it to be on the back so I know where to work it. Let's see, an apple is shaped kind of like this. And maybe it has a leaf. And maybe, possibly, I could get it to have a stem. But there's no guarantees. So if that's what I'm planning to do, I want to have this apple up here on this side in three-dimensional tin. And so I think I'm going to go right for this stuff, which is softer, because I want to get it to bend. I'm going to take my biggest spoon. Let's talk about spoons. I got a big old spoon. I got a kind of a more pointed spoon. I've got this I can use, I've got this I can use, and later on I think I'm going to use this, which is where how I got the stippled part behind my evergreen tree, but that comes at the very end. So I'm going to start out with my biggest spoon, and I'm just going to go right up to the edge and press. Not press so much, Marilyn, that I distort things. I want this aluminum to bend for me. I'm going right up to the outline and press it down. And if I do this for a long time, I can get the aluminum. <laughs> I've got some sticky on this piece here. You don't have any on yours, I'm sure. This is where the probably the price tag was stuck. Bend, bend, bend. And I'm just going to encourage, encourage, encourage this apple to appear on the opposite side without any outline drawn on it. And it will take a while. I better go get some unsticky to get that off or it's going to give me fits while I try to get it to bend over where the price tag was. You can't see very much yet on this side, but if I keep working at it and press right there at the edge, and press, I'm actually going to be molding the aluminum into a three-dimensional apple. And if I get tired of using the big spoon, I can maybe get a little bit better with the sharp spoon. Notice that I'm working with the back of the spoon, not like this, because I'm afraid if I did this, I could actually rip my aluminum. And I'd like to try to see if I could get this to not be Haitian metalwork, but Mexican metalwork. Oh, okay. So check this out. I'm getting a little bit more effect with the sharp one than with the big old one. So that may be the way to go for me to use my sharper spoon and just work 
at the line and in because those are the places that I want it to be become larger. Take a look at what that looks like on the other side. You can see it's starting to balloon out towards, out towards you. But it's going to take some time. So why don't we all start working on our project and then as everybody is working on it we can talk and I will continue working on this just doing exactly the same thing pressing at the line and in towards the center of the apple working and working and working to get that apple to be three-dimensional and we will catch up with each other in just a minute we'll take a look at the difference I've made and here I am making a little bit more progress. Check that out. So what I can do once I've got a little bit of concaveness, what's that called? Concavity? I can take my spoon and if I run my sharp spoon along the inside of this line, pressing down pretty hard, I can get things to be pretty smooth and get to have some more concavity to my to my aluminum. So you see before I was doing this and bending and bending and bending and now I'm going along the edge kind of in the sideways direction and pressing that down which on the other side has it starting to come up. Mm. And if I want to have it just be a flat apple, I could stop at that point, but I'm hoping I can get even a little bit more bulbing out of it. With patience, like I say, we're going to work on this for a while. Once I get the apple somewhat showing itself on this side, I can go back on the, other, on the correct side and kind of just give it a little bit of definition by pressing down what I don't want to be up. Aha, see, here it goes pop. That's okay. That is okay. Press that down just for a little bit more clarity. Where's the apple and where's not the apple? Starting to show. It's going to be a little bit more interesting to get that that uh, stem and the reason I say that is because it's a very narrow place and to get it to pop out I'm going to have to kind of hit it with something sharp and I'm afraid that I'm going to pop right through like I did the trunk of my evergreen tree pop right through. Meh, we'll see how that goes. Let's, darn it, let's give it a try. So I'm just going to Try to get some definition there, pressing with the other end of my spoon. I can use this as a tool because it's flat. If you've got one that's sharp, you don't want to be pressing it into your aluminum. That's not going to help you, but I can use this. If you have only sharp ends to your spoons, then you can look around your house for something other than a spoon to use as a tool. Let's see what that looks like on the... Ooh! Ooh, that looks pretty cool. Oh, that was successful. <laughs> I shouldn't sound surprised, should I? But that's kind of almost a straight line. I wonder how I can do with that leaf, because the leaf is kind of flowy and not straight. I will see if I can do this. Just pressing it along. I think I need to press that a little bit more. That's not showing up except just a straight line. <sighs> a lot of times I'm holding my breath while I'm pressing down. And the whole trick with tin work is just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. This is a good practice for us for patients because this isn't a craft that just presents itself quickly, it's one where you have to work at it. Because if you press too hard and too fast on aluminum, 
it rips. Okay, and I can make that a little more clear by pressing down what I don't want up on the other side. And also I'll be adding color to this later too. So that will also help. Does that start to look like an apple? Darned if that doesn't start to look like an apple. Way cool. I've got some sort of a funny something happening here, so I'm going to go back in and try to correct that. And I will just keep working at it. I'll see you in a minute. You can see that I've got quite a bit of action going on inside the apple. That's what it looks like on the concave side. That's what it looks like on the convex side. So I'm going to now try to get rid of all of the individual strokes and try to make them smooth. And how I do that is instead of pulling towards the center, which is what I have been doing, now I'm going to go sideways against the grain, as it were, against those, those strokes, and just kind of try to smooth them all into one big motion. It's starting to smooth out there. And all this is going to be bending the aluminum to give me more height for my apple. I don't think I'm going to touch that, that uh, stem at all because I really like the way it turned out and I don't want to take any danger of busting through on it. So I, I have noticed as I'm working on my pad that I have pressed in the middle so much that now this is pretty much flat. I noticed that I have quite a bit of pillow on the edges. So what I've been doing while I was working was working on the edges where I have a lot more cushy, cushy pillow. And that, I think, is going to be maybe all I want to do on the apple. Oh, I like my stem. All right, working on this side, I'm going to go back to working on the newspaper because I don't want it to break through. And I'm going to just give it a little bit of definition by outlining it, pressing down what I don't want to be up. Okay, now the background that I did on the evergreen tree is kind of a cool effect and also a way to make the background disappear into the background and let this stand out a little bit more. The way I got it was I used a pen like that and I just put the pen on and went and made a little circle and I made a gazillion little circles right up as close to the evergreen as I felt comfortable doing. I did not want to ever give it anything sharp because that would be a puncture and I don't want this to puncture so I gave it a flat edge. Let's do a little bit of stippling around my apple. Remember, no, nothing sharp. I lay it on there and I just go just a little roundabout. It's a motion like this so that the sharp part of the pen sees the metal each time around and I don't want it to be like looking like a pearls on a string or anything. I want it to be kind of haphazard but I'm going to just make little circles from now till next Wednesday afternoon. Like I say we are looking at patience here. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. I'll do some a little bit farther apart and then kind of make a second row maybe. And maybe I just want to kind of walk that around a little bit just to make it look even more not planned. So you see how that makes the apple stand out from the background even a little better. So I can do that. And you guys can do that once you've got it 
to that point if you choose to stipple the background. We also want to think about coloring. Now I've got some Sharpie markers, and hopefully you do too, that we can make our tin art colorful. The one thing that I know I want to do is I want that stem to be brown. It's kind of big. I need to have it closer to me or I can't get past it. So I can make that brown. Then the leaf wants to be dark green because that's the color of apple leaves. Of course, you will be painting whatever it is that you've made. You know, maybe you've made an Easter egg and you're going to make it pretty stripes and spots and pretty things like an Easter egg. I could make my apple all red and that would be very, very shiny and pretty. But I think that I'm going to try to give a little bit more interest to the color of the apple and try to make part of it red and part of it maybe green. It's maybe, maybe it's a Macintosh. So I can give myself some red parts. I'm just making this up as I go along here. Let's see what color this gives. Well, that's kind of a kind of a chartreuse, kind of a yellow green like that. Maybe he is up in there a little bit too. What happens if we put in a little bit of this dark green as well? Okay, good. I think that's enough green. I think the rest of it should just be red. So you know how with a Macintosh apple, there's parts of it that are green and parts of it that are red and they just kind of meld into each other. I'm careful not to touch with my fingers the part that I've already painted because I'm not sure that the Sharpie color isn't just going to come off of the metal and right onto my hand where I don't want it to be. So maybe it would be better if I moved, stayed on one side of it and stayed away from where I was going to have trouble by reaching across the apple. Yeah, this is turning out cool. I hope yours is too. And remember, if you, if you puncture your aluminum, that's no big deal. We have all kinds of punctured aluminum folk art as well, specifically in Haiti, like I mentioned. Okay. That's going to be my tin art, and the reason that people like to do it is because it's shiny. You know, the, the reflectiveness of the aluminum is, is um, they want that. So I'm going to stipple around the rest of this, and we have you guys working on, on your shape, and in the end we can all hold them up to your computer camera and show each other the uh, shapes that we've made in the Mexican tin art. And you know what, we'll probably put together another folk art gallery for the uh, Homeschool Cooperative Facebook page and show everybody all the different shapes that we've made in Mexican tin art.